Hey guys, I sincerely hope things are going well for you during this season of intentional preparation, active waiting. Yes, there's a global pandemic going on, but as we saw last time, there's also this season of intentional preparation being orchestrated by our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And in relationship to a virus that's being called a crown virus, I just wanted to say up front that there's only one who is worthy to wear the crown that can rule us all. This virus has brought about a global fear, paralysis, anxiety, and the enemy is using it to rule the hearts of so many around the world, rule our actions and even our posture toward living. But only Jesus gets to wear that crown. And we need to make sure that in this time of trouble, we do not accede to the enemy's agenda in any way whatsoever. Now, this current season, it's very interesting. And this last time we talked about the day in between, the day of waiting, brought to light some poignant thoughts for me about the season we're living in and just what God is doing through it. And this idea of intentional preparation led me to a concept found in Scripture that really spoke to me. And that's the idea of a crucible. The Word of God talks about the crucible in Psalms, Proverbs, and the prophet Zechariah. But the concept is actually laced throughout the scriptures. In Proverbs 17.3, it says this, A crucible is for the silver, and a furnace is for the gold. But Yahweh will test hearts. The word here for crucible is the Hebrew word matstreth. And it literally means a crucible, a refining pot, a smelter. Friends, the church globally right now is being put through a crucible, a season of refining, which I think will define us for the next generation. And it is critical that as we always understand what season we are in, we should also know how we should then respond as we're being put through it. The crucible, a time of intense preparation. And the definition of a crucible is helpful here, even if we kind of understand the idea of a refining pot or a smelter. Here's what Merriam-Webster has to say about a crucible. It's a vessel of a very resilient material, such as porcelain, used for melting and calcinating a substance that requires a high degree of heat to drive off unwanted matter. Kind of sounds like my flesh. Secondly, it can refer to a severe test. And thirdly, a place or situation in which concentrated forces interact to cause influence, change, or development. And it's those last two definitions that so describe what I see us as enduring right now. We're going through a severe test. And we are in a place or a situation in which concentrated forces are interacting and they will cause influence because they are influencing. They are causing drastic change and developments of some kind. And I believe that God wants to use this season to drive off unwanted matter, purify us, and therefore prepare us for what's coming or what is to come. You know, Psalm 12, 6 tells us that God's word is pure, as if it has been through the crucible and refined seven times. Metaphorically, that means that God's word is perfect and can be totally trusted. Proverbs 27, 21 tells us that we are tested by the way we receive the praise of men. And of course, this speaks to the root of our character, is there pride lurking there that needs to be driven off? And it's amazing how God can use a global event like this pandemic to completely wipe out man's pride and humble us in an incredible way. And Zechariah 13, 9 tells us that God will refine his remnant. He tests those that, we had call, that he would call his own. And we see this throughout the scripture that God calls his own but when we're called, we're also called to his cause. And those he calls to his cause, 
he will always purify and refine. He tests their metal to make sure he can use them and to make sure that they know they can be used. You know, think about, think about Noah. He was called to ridicule from his entire society and culture. Crazy man building this thing down the road. What an idiot. He was called to obviously a season of hard labor, chopping down trees and shaping them and forming them and building this massive boat. And he was also called to a severe ordeal, not just gathering all the animals, but a global flood. And he was used to save a remnant from the ancient world, an ancient world that was totally destroyed. Think about the Apostle Paul. He was called to a desert, to an arduous journey, to scorn, banishment, whippings, beatings, and eventual martyrdom. But he was also used to write a huge portion of the New Testament and plant churches that would change civilization as we know it. Think about Abraham. He was called to leave his homeland and travel to a place he had never been. And once he was there, he was further called to sacrifice his son, his only son, his miracle son, an idolatry test to see if he was fit to be used by God to become the father of nations. So what? What does this have to do with us and the crucible we're in right now? Well, there's a very incredible and famous story in Daniel chapter 3. One of the most famous stories in the Bible about three guys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. A pompous king named King Nebuchadnezzar, his golden statue, and his famous fiery furnace. And as you know how the story goes, there were these Babylonians, and they were jealous of these Hebrews. And they go to the king, and they say, these Jews, which kind of implies a bit of a, a racist tone, actually. And in the middle of that, these guys are accused of not bowing down and worshiping the statue, the golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar had erected in his own image. And of course, as we know, not only did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego engage in civil disobedience, they were tried, found guilty, and hauled in to be executed in the fiery furnace. And we can pick up the story in Daniel chapter 3. And of course, what's been going on is that the king confronts them and says, come on, guys, you need to bow down. He's furious. Bow down and worship. And of course, they're like, we're not going to because it totally violates us, our character, our heart, our religion, and the God. He says, and he threatens them. I'll throw you into the midst of the furnace. And what God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? And in Daniel 3, 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, which is, it's respect, but not worship. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of this blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand. But even if he does not. Let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. That's bold. And what I find so incredible about that story is that even before these faithful young men hit the furnace, you can see that they have already been refined, and in this case, the furnace itself actually revealed the miracle that had already been done in their lives. And once in the furnace, you could literally see it. The very presence of the Son of God interacting with them, fellowshipping with them, being with them in the midst of this intense ordeal. I also find it quite interesting that when King Nebuchadnezzar had brought them out of the furnace, 
having witnessed this miracle, not only was there no harm brought to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there was not even a whiff of fire or smoke on them. It would appear that they had been so refined and so perfected through their relationship with God, through the time they obviously spent praying and worshiping, and even and obviously their time in his word, they were so refined that there had been no dross to burn off them. Man, if that could be true in my life, because there's lots of dross that needs to be burned off. And I would submit to you that this is a time and a season where God wants to burn the dross off of his church as well. They had been so refined that there was no dross to burn off. Man, if that could be true in my life. And friends, it can it can be for all of us. If you're finding it difficult to endure this season, I get it. Because we're in the middle of a severe test. And it's going to change us inside and out. But I think one of the most important things we need to learn here is what part do we have to play in the change that God wants to bring? Will we let him? Will we submit to the potter's hand as we spin on his will? Or will we struggle off the table and fall to the floor as an unformed, slimy mass, unable to be used for anything? Will we submit to the crucible, the heat, the refining, the purifying, which at the end of the day should reveal what is really going on? And what is really going on in this season? Complaining? Self-pity? Binge-watching things we shouldn't binge-watch? I don't know, and I'm not accusing you of anything. But it isn't it interesting how a season of testing like this will always reveal what is really lying right under the surface. And what is right under the surface? I hope it's the very presence of the Son of God in us, just like we saw, just like Nebuchadnezzar saw, when he looked into that furnace and he saw the Son of God fellowshipping with these three brave men, interacting with us, strengthening us to face whatever challenge, whatever idolatry, even whatever needs to die so we can better live. Let's pray together. Lord God, I just pray for anyone who's watching this as they are going through this season of ordeal that they would submit to you and not come off the potter's wheel and end up on the floor, but submit to your loving hands, submit to your fiery furnace because you are the God who refines, who purifies, does not destroy, but creates vessels that are all the more worthy of carrying about your worship, your praise, your honor, and your glory. Would you please continue to do that for us, Lord, whatever you need to do, now, in this season, and even on in through the rest of our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are such a good God. We worship you, we praise you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.